Welcome everyone. I'm Kate and this is my one for one life. Um, this is my new Bible and I'm sharing it because of, I think what I'm, I'm learning from what I've done with this. I bought this, um, a new translation and I'm always up for a new translation because you know, it's fun. Right. And this wonderful gal on Etsy does all of these different tabs. And I was like, oh my gosh, they're so cute. I love them. So I don't know, I'll probably spend an hour looking through all the different ones. And then I came across, you know, the, the things, I don't know, graphic, if you will, that she can put on the front of your Bible. And I loved this. I was like, oh yes, this is what I want. And I got the Bible. And when I opened it, I was, I, I love the fact I'm like, look at the columns. I can write in that. I can highlight, I can write notes. I can do all these things inside the Bible. And then I felt the answer was no. And, and I had this thought niggling in my head going, well, who am I to write anything, add anything to the word? So I've had this Bible, I think, um, almost a couple months, and I've not written anything in it, which is, which is really unusual for me because I, you know, I look at this one. I mean, I do this. I mean, this is what I do. I this is a is a journaling Bible, and I highlight and I do stuff. But <clears throat> for one reason, that is not what I think I'm supposed to do in this. Um, Proverbs 14, one says a wise woman built her house, but a foolish one tears it down with her own hands. And, you know, and I'm like, Lord, I'm far more foolish than I am around wise. And wisdom comes from God. Um, Proverbs 1, 7 says the fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge. Proverbs 9, 10 says, fear the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Proverbs 15, 33, fear the Lord teaches us wisdom. It's the fear of the Lord. That's where it all comes from. It's not from me. It's not me building my house. Psalm 127.1 says, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. I don't want to labor in vain. He needs to build my house. He needs, I need to step back and just let the Lord, because who am I? Hebrews 3.3 3 says, but Jesus deserves far more glory than Moses, just as a person who builds a house deserves more praise than the house itself. Anything I build has to be from the Lord. So I was praying the other day. Bible just sitting in my hand and we've had taken some pretty good financial um, hits this year in our business. It, nothing that everybody else who owns a business haven't, you know, we just lost another work truck. I mean, this is livelihood. This is um, how my husband, you know, what he works out of. And I'm sitting there going, Lord, You, you know, I'm questioning like, Lord, you know what's going on? He needs this truck. And I'm staring at the cover of my Bible. And the longer I look at it, the more convicted I am. 
And I literally began to weep. I'm like, Lord, I, I picked that because I thought it looked good. You know, I'm just like, this is what I want, you know, but you go back to, and Jesus says, what, what is someone going to build something without first counting the cost? I put this on my Bible. And did I really count the cost of what take everything means? No, I didn't. I didn't. And yet there is nothing that I have that I want to withhold from Jesus. And I thought of Lot's wife as I'm like, all right, Jesus, take everything. It's like, ooh, everything. Is there anything that I have that I should withhold from him? No, because anything I'm withholding from him means I like that more than I, than him, that this is set up higher than Jesus. So therefore it's that four letter word. It's an idol. And we are told that we shall have no other gods before them. No, no other gods before him. It's Jesus first. It's not Jesus plus something. It's Jesus first. And yet, I want this. What, uh, which one of us who follows Jesus doesn't want this, right? This is, should be our, our goal. And in Matthew 7, Jesus says, those who follow, who hear my words and, and obey them will be like the person, the wise person who builds their house on a rock. When the winds come and the rain and, and the storms of life, the house stands because it's founded on the rock. It's founded on Jesus Christ. But the foolish person who doesn't do what he says is like the one who builds it on sand. Who, <laughs> like, Lord, woo. So that's the one that says, oh, I said, take everything, but I don't mean that. That's sand. That's sand. And the house fell and great was its fall. So I just want to encourage you today to give God everything. Is it going to be easy? Oh, my God. Goodness, no. If you go into James and it says, um, count it all joy when we have trials and tribulations of all kinds. When life is uncomfortable, the pruning process is happening. And we get more of him and there's less of us. And that's a good thing because I am the foolish one who tears down my house with our own hands. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's the foundation of all things. And if I am out of the way, then he can build my house. Because it's far better for him to build my house. And I don't want to be like Lot's wife. Right? They're leaving. And she turns around and looks back. And it costs her everything. She turns into a pillar of salt because she can't let go of that which she's left behind, which she was asked to leave. So Lord, if more of you means less of me, and I know it will be painful and uncomfortable, and I'll probably kick and whine at times, and tell you, Lord, it's just too hard. Oh, but Holy Spirit, help me. Help each and every one of us to open our hands. Because there is nothing here that's worth more than you. Nothing. 
Take everything, Lord. Because as we go through the fiery furnace, you are with us in that fiery furnace. You are with us in the trials, in the struggles, in the pruning. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. You are all loved so, so much. God bless.